Jola has joined us along with Candice Bergen. Candice is already number one. First time ever for a woman at ringside in German boxing history. Hey, I almost feel like part of an entourage, Larry, as we came down here. And Candice, I know you felt the same way. <laughs> you know, there's so much. It, the excitement is building here. And I had in my hand right now a letter Richard Dunn gave me. His prediction for this fight. We'll tell you about that. Because it's a whole big story, Richard Dunn, even being here. Who is fighting for the World Heavyweight Championship because he won the European Heavyweight title. of Richard Dunn, who just in a year was working on scaffolds. He would get up in the morning, do some road work, and then he would go to work and then fight. But here he is fighting for the World Heavyweight Championship. It's a story of three people. And here's his title-winning fight. is going to put you top of the world, my lad. Get in there and work. Jump in, Richard. Jump in, guys. Jump in, my friend. Every morning you come up here and run, huh? Well, two or three times a week, maybe. Uh -huh. You know, not every morning. This is beautiful. Yeah, it's nice and fresh and clean. You know, no petrol fumes, no smoke or anything. It's just nice and clean. Gets you closer to the man who made all this, huh? Definitely, definitely closer, yeah. Yeah. How would you describe, if, if I wanted to build a Richard Dunn, what would I use? How would you describe Richard Dunn as a fighter? Uh, well, first of all, you'd want a Yorkshireman because that's Richard Dunn as a Yorkshireman. Uh -huh. He'd have to be uh, big and strong, with a big heart and a flat nose. Yeah. Big heart and a flat nose? Yeah, flat nose. And uh, you'd have to motivate him. And you'd have a fighter, a good fighter. As long as you're from Yorkshire, that's the main thing. You know, That's one of the main ingredients, is Yorkshire blood. George Biddle was the big change in your life. What did he do, Richard? And I was at a boxing show one night, and I saw uh, George Biddle there. And George said, he said, what are you doing watching? He said, you should be fighting here. I said, well, I can't get no sparring partners, no work, George. So I said, well, come down to my gym. You know, so I went down. It was a 214-mile round trip. I went down two or three times, you know, and things started to happen. What did he do that gave you this motivation that has gotten you right where you are? Uh, well, you're, you're fighting for the world's heavyweight championship. Well, look, the family told me I was good, you know what I mean? But you expect your family to say you're good. You know what I mean? But George told me I was good. You know, when well, I started listening to him, you know, uh, he started putting ideas into me. Richard, can you tell us anything at all about how you plan to fight Ali? What your game plan will be? We have no plan, really. I'm going to be aggressive from the first bell to the last. Aggressive all the time. Now, you're not going to need any extra motivation for this fight, huh? No, I've got plenty of motivation at home. I've Janet and the three children. That's the only motivation I need now. Richard, what about Janet? Jenna's fantastic. She's a real, she's an ace, you know, she does everything for me, you know. I'm like a bird when I'm with her, you know, she's the boss all around, you know. As far as the boxing comes out, anyway. Her and her dad, you know, Jimmy. Well, we're going to talk to Janet and find out more about how she, uh, she's your ace. Oh, she's smashing, yeah. She's smashing. the best. See, the best. I understand that, smash. Yeah. Good Yorkshire word is smashing. <laughs> Janet, he talks about you as being his ace and his motivation. Have you tried to be, or is it something that just happened? I think it's just happened. Um, me and my dad, Richard's trainer, have been in it for a long, long time, before I met Richard. Um, we've sort of been behind him all the way. How do you feel when you see him get knocked out? Well, I think, where well, is his guard? What were wrong with his guard? Keep it up. Keep his guard up? Keep That's what you said? Keep his guard up, yeah. You don't worry about him being knocked out? Oh, well, I don't feel right, right happy about it, do I? You I don't, don't feel happy about it. I just think he should have had his guard up. That wouldn't have happened. 
I'll tell him his biggest critic and all. Yeah, but you're talking now as a as a fight trainer as opposed to a wife. I told you, I know boxing. A wife, I love Richard and I give him all the love he could ever have. We love us kids, but I'm talk we're talking about boxing now, not about family life. Richard looks like such a big, lovable guy. He's a big softy at home, isn't he? What do you think is ahead after this fight? Rosie future. Some so we can go out and buy things without having to save up. Like we have always have had to do. We've had to really save to buy every little thing that we've got in this house. We can go out now and just buy it, which is nice. You've never Believe had me, that? No, we never had it. So it's security, it's what it's done? Security, a good future for our kids. What else can you ask for? This is where Janet and Richard Dunn live. And what a year it's been for him. He's gone from working on scaffolding to become the European heavyweight champion. And tonight, he fights for the heavyweight championship of the world. Some kind of year. Briefly for station identification, this is the NBC television network. about to defend against Richard Dunn. Now, we've just met Richard Dunn, a great piece, Joe. Can he win the heavyweight title? Is there any chance? Well, I, I, like anybody else, he gets in the ring, he's got a chance. But he gave me a letter. I have not opened it. I have to put my glasses on. Oh, this I'm, is the much uh, publicized this is the much prediction? This publicized prediction by Richard Dunn. I have not looked at it. And, and the I'm winner is Wayne Blavick. <laughs> he's written a master's he says, thesis. Well, I'm going to... It is the eighth round, and as Ali tries his rope-a-dope trick, I get mad and try to force him out of the ring. I hammer in him into uh, under the ropes and we're a tangle of legs and arms. Suddenly the referee stops the fight. I hold my hands up. The next thing I know, I wake up in a sweat, convinced that I am the new champion. This is the famous dream that he had, and this is what he wrote. Eighth round is what Richard Dunn says. That's what is going to happen. All right, the statistics on the fight. You can see that Muhammad Ali and Richard Dunn physically are about the same size. Larry, do you have any feelings about that? Yes, uh, I think they're about the same size from the, the ankles down, actually, as far as being a fighter is concerned. I'd say that Dunn, who is a decent fellow and a former paratrooper, probably has as much chance of winning this fight as, uh, as he has of jumping out an aer airplane with a pillowcase and landing safely. Will, will Ali look faster because of Dunn's style, you think? I think he will. There's no doubt about it. You know, at, Ali is a master illusionist, and I think you're going to see him at his best in that field as well. When he was fighting Jimmy Young, and Jimmy Young is a clever guy moving away, and so naturally the punches look more tentative and awkward as you try to reach him. He's a similar fighter to Ali, if not the kind of fighter that Ali is in class. Here you, have a, here you have a man who's actually coming right at him. If you're hitting a guy moving away, your punch is like that. If you're hitting a guy come in you, you're like that. You better not turn and hit Candace over there. Candace, can you make a comment? I can make no comment whatsoever on weight or size, what? except that Ali's prettier than Dunn. Who do you want to win, Candace? Do you have a feeling? You say you don't care about boxing. You've been here a long time. Do you care if Ali wins? Yes, I care. I care about Ali. I've spent a week with him. I care about him. <laughs> and there are a lot of folks who care about the underdog and that's what makes this fight still an interesting one, although it's not Dempsey Tunney, and that is that he might win. The great underdog might win. It's like buying a ticket to the lottery. Only two guys got a chance to win. He's one of them, but Al Lee, of course, is the big favorite. And listen to the crowd starting to build it up, Jake. Look at the, look at the contrast. There are people lined up 10 deep on one aisle waiting for Ali. There's no one up this aisle. That's where Don might be arriving from. And we'll be right back to get ready for this big fight right after this message. You've probably heard my pain reliever worked better than yours. If your pain reliever is regular aspirin, mine is Excedrin. And in two medical studies on pain other than headache, pain that can be measured more readily, Excedrin works significantly better than regular aspirin tablets. Why did Excedrin work better? Tablet for tablet, Excedrin provides more pain reliever, more total strength than regular aspirin. When you're in pain, try Excedrin, the extra strength pain reliever. See if my pain reliever doesn't work better. One of these motorcycles is a big 1,000cc Harley-Davidson. The other Harley-Davidson's 250cc street bike. Built to feel, ride, and look like a classic Harley-Davidson. With Harley-Davidson acceleration, power, durability, 
If you can't tell it from our big bike, see your AMF Harley-Davidson dealer. Experience the SS250 yourself. Until you've been on a Harley-Davidson, you haven't been on a motorcycle. Buy a new 125 to 250 cycle before June 7th. Get $169 CD free. Hey, Pete Rose! What's a man really want from an aftershave? Not fancy perfume. Or fancy bottles. Not fancy prices. No! A man wants to smell like a man. There's something about Aqua Velva. He wants to be cool and refreshed. There's something about Aqua Velva. A man wants to feel like a man. The most beautiful country in Europe is also one of the least expensive to visit, Ireland. Fly there on Aer Lingus, Ireland's international airline. Muhammad Ali about to defend against Richard Dunn. Now, we've just met Richard Dunn, a great piece, Joe. Can he win the heavyweight title? Is there any chance? Well, I, I like anybody else, he gets in the ring, he's got a chance. But he gave me a letter. I have not opened it. I have to put my glasses on. Oh, this I'm, is the much uh, publicized much prediction? This is the much publicized prediction by Richard Dunn. I have not looked at it. And the winner is Wayne Bobbick. <laughs> he's written a master's he says, thesis. Well, I'm going to... It is the eighth round, and as Ali tries his rope-a-dope trick, I get mad and try to force him out of the ring. I hammer in him into uh, under the ropes, and we're a tangle of legs and arms. Suddenly, the referee stops the fight. I hold my hands up. The next thing I know, I wake up in a sweat, convinced that I am the new champion. This is the famous dream that he had, and this is what he wrote. Eighth round is what Richard Dunn says. That's when it's going to happen. All right, the statistics on the fight. You can see that... Muhammad Ali and Richard Dunn physically are about the same size. Larry, do you have any feelings about that? Yes, uh, I think they're about the same size from the, the ankles down, actually, as far as being a fighter is concerned. I'd say that Dunn, who is a decent fellow and a former paratrooper, probably has as much chance of winning this fight as, uh, as he has of jumping out an airplane with a pillowcase and landing safely. Will, will Ali look faster because of Dunn's style, you think? I think he will. There's no doubt about it. You know, at, Ali is a master illusionist, and I think you're going to see him at his best in that field as well. When he was fighting Jimmy Young, and Jimmy Young is a clever guy moving away, and so naturally the punches look more tentative and awkward as he try to reach him. He's a similar fighter to Ali, if not the kind of fighter that Ali is in class. Here you, have a, here you have a man who's actually coming right at him. If you're hitting a guy moving away, your punch is like that. If you're hitting a guy come in you, you're like that. You better not turn and hit Candace over there. Candace, can you make a comment? I can make no comment whatsoever on weight or size, what? except that Ali's prettier than Dunn. Who do you want to win, Candace? Do you have a feeling? You say you don't care about boxing. You've been here a long time. Do you care if Ali wins? Yes, I care. I care about Ali. I've spent a week with him. I care about him. <laughs> and there are a lot of folks who care about the underdog, and that's what makes this fight still an interesting one, although it's not Dempsey Tunney, and that is that he might win. The great underdog might win. It's like buying a ticket to the lottery. Only two guys got a chance to win. He's one of them, but Ali, of course, is the big favorite. 70 successful jumps himself, and you know where he'd like to land tonight. Richard Dunn, the challenger, the European heavyweight champion, Muhammad Ali, and part of the boxing sportsmanship, gamesmanship, able to wait, let the other man go to the ring first and think about the upcoming duel. The Union Jack precedes Dunn into the ring. There's Biddles, the trainer, Jimmy Devaney, his corner man, and Richard Dunn. Challenger, the European champion Richard Dunn, and this large crowd at Olympia Hall waiting for the arrival of champion Muhammad Ali. And here comes the royal family, the entourage that we saw earlier on film. 
And Muhammad Ali will make his way down the corridor of fans that line the way to the squared circle in his 16th title defense. Now at 220 pounds, he's 10 pounds lighter tonight than three and a half weeks ago against Jimmy Young in Landover, Maryland. He's been a man obsessed about his weight. He was embarrassed. He embarrassed himself by his poor condition the last time out. Tonight, he's promised to be dancing. He says, I'll be dancing, dancing, a lighter, better trained champion who argues against any advancing age. Now 34, Ali defends for the 16th time, and he still is a beautiful man. He looks like a confident man, as he always does, and Dick, I can't wait to hear the explosion because this crowd is building up, building up, and wherever he goes, it's excitement, but it'll be an explosion as we see this entourage make its way out. Listen to it, Bill. And they'll start chanting, Ali, Ali, as soon as they get their first glimpse of him. He's about 20 strides away from entering the hall. Some of the fans see him on the far side. There's no question as to who the favorite in the fight will be. It is Ali. They love the man. Those closest to him now are the business people. They'll be the four, five, six people in the immediate corner. Dr. Purdy Pacheco from Miami is physician. His bodyguards. This is quite a walk for them. They almost need shoulder pads to get through the crowd. The fighter takes a pretty good whack in himself getting through the crowd. And listen to this audience at Olympia Hall.
D.C. was at Yankee Stadium when Joe Lewis knocked out Billy Kahn in the eighth round. Tonight from Munich, Germany, it's Richard Dunn challenging heavyweight champion Muhammad Ali. Dick, I got to tell you, during the playing of the anthem, just sitting here and standing here ringside, that ring looked so big when we first came in, and Dunn and Ali were not in it, but he sure looks awful small. Just uh, Ali alone kind of closes the distance. I think it's some 21 feet, but all they got. Don, as you saw during the playing of the anthems, refused to look across eye to eye at Muhammad Ali. Let's pick up the instructions being given the fighters now. Basically, just by keep your punches clean. Formality of instructions. The referee is Herbert Thompson. The judges are Baldo of Spain, Ferrati of Italy. training for a seven round fight guns people that is that means he's going to have to go after him early and as Jimmy Ellis and Ali's corner said listen when you're going for the heavyweight championship you've got to go and saying I'm going to knock him out or be knocked out you're not planning for 15. No question that Ali looks much more sleek. Circle to the left, to the blind side of the southpaw. got a weed eater trimmer for Father's Day. It cuts grass with fishing line. It's the most amazing machine I've ever owned. It's a trimmer. It's an edger. It's a mower. And a sweeper. Or so I've been told. You see, I haven't had a chance to use it yet. There's only one weed eater trimmer. It's patented. It's registered. When I tried to quit smoking, I got tense. But I have found a way to help me quit. It's the same way I started. One step at a time. One step at a time, Brian, by Waterpick. 
system of four filters that helps you withdraw from smoking. You use each filter for two weeks. By the time you reach filter four, you reduce the tars and nicotines of a full pack to just two cigarettes. And that's where I can stop. One step at a time. Man, all these long buttons look let me go deep. I know I can score. All right, he's going deep on three. Hey! hey. hey. Some things you just know are right. Like Schlitz. They've been improving the skills of brewing for over a century because they know you judge the quality of their beer every time you open a Schlitz. But who needs to be told? Just one taste and you know it.
himself, regardless of what happened, has distinguished himself in these first two rounds. And it's a different Ali than we saw in Maryland uh, less than a month ago. Oh. Again, it's the right hand that has been scoring for Ali. And he's landed his best on Dunn and staggered him, but has not put him down. King asked me, Metalock Lemon, to show some of the ways you can have a Whopper your way. All right, the Whopper comes with the works, but you can have extra ketchup. Or ketchup mayo and lettuce. A mayo but no ketchup. There's a double beef Whopper, double beef with cheese. And double beef with pickles and onions and no cheese. Time out! This ain't double beef with pickle onions and no cheese. This is. And that's my way. Have it go away. The conventional small car. Here's what AMC did to give you more small car. We made it wider so you get more room. We put in an isolated suspension system for a smooth ride and rack and pinion steering for precise handling. It's got far more visibility, bigger doors, and a wide hatch. This is the AMC Pacer, and it's everything a small car never was. as if Biddles was calling Dunn's actions here in the early going round four. Dunn has a lot of veteran riders at ringside wearing expressions of surprise. They didn't think that he could trade with Ali this way. And at the start of every round, Dunn comes out, puts his hands on his hips as if to say, come on, let's get this thing going. Where are you? We're in round four. No knockdowns. Dunn was staggered in the second round. In case you join us late, Dwayne Bobbick scored an eighth round knockout over Bunny Johnson earlier.
incredible fight. Now Ali certainly dominating with Dunn. Now he's talking to all the corners. Here comes Dunn. He's ready. This is a prize fight. Round five. The champion Ali says, I'm putting you away now. Get ready. You're going. Dunn does not know how to hide. He doesn't have that finesse to get away from Ali. He'll fight him to the end. And Ali figures that he's set up for the kill in round five.
Dundee had written the fifth round, a KO by Ali over Richard Dunn. You imagine that he does that before the fight, so he really picked it. So many. I can't, I can't talk about nobody before I talk about God. I thank Almighty God Allah for my success, my victory. Also, I want to say Islam alaikum to the Chief Minister of the Nation of Islam, the Muslims in America, the Honorable Wallace D. Muhammad, my leading teacher. Also, I must say that Dick Gregor is a great man. He's running from coast to coast, putting emphasis on the food problem. He's now about 20 miles out of Wichita, Kansas, on Highway 54. I want to say hello to him. Thanks to Brother Herbert Muhammad, my manager, and all my family at home all watching right. the fight. Okay. And I want to say I will be fighting next month, the Chirassel and Champion of the World. And here's your man that you defeated, Richard Dunn from Yorkshire. Any comments about the courage of the, the, the I, challenger? I want to say I'm so happy that I trained. I got in shape. This man is a world top contender. He's a young man yet. I predict he's going to be a top-notch contender. He gave me more trouble than I expected, and I'm glad I was in shape for this fight. And if I was in the same shape this month like I was last month, I would have lost the fight with no doubt because he's a great fighter. He's better than I thought he was, and I predict you hear a lot about Richard Dunn. He landed some punches. Did he ever hurt you? He shook me up about two times. You recall the particular punch of the round? This round, he caught me right at the start, and he caught me kind of late in the second. Richard Dunn, Richard, how do you feel? I feel all right. Go ahead. You felt you could have continued? Pardon? You, did you feel you could have continued? Yeah, I could have done, but, you know, I'm not a referee. I'm a referee. He said, no, no, that's enough. Anything to say to Ali before leaving? Yeah, I'll fight him again. You'd like to fight him again? Who, who wouldn't? I'll give him a rematch because he deserves it. Put up a little fight better than most of my opponents. Also, I want to say, assalamu alaikum to all the Muslims and my friends, fans. Thanks, President Ford, for giving me the honor that he gave me when he uh, mentioned my name in the press conference the other day about the 2,000 American soldiers I bought tickets for. And again, to my great leader, the only man for solution to the world problem. And I love him. He's my leader and teacher, my guide, all my power and strength. And so has come from God, Allah, through the Honorable Wallace D. Muhammad. I want to say to him, if he's watching, and the people of the world, I salam alaikum. Before you leave, the right hand, was that the strategy all the way that you'd hit him with the right? The right hand lead because I've fought South Falls before, and it's the right hand. Also, I want to say to Michael Reese Hospital out there, to, to Stephen Fetcher, the great comedian who's sick, and I hope God bless him to get well soon. How about Ken Norton? Anything to say to him? Ken Norton, Yankee Stadium. Tell him I think he can see now. He made mention that the last fight he saw was not the Ali. Here's one of your knockdowns, Mohammed. Excuse me, please. Yes. We'll meet Ken Norton in the Yankee Stadium coming up soon. First, I'm going to get the Japanese wrestler. I have two great karate teachers with me. Mr. Uh, from Washington, D.C., two great karate teachers are getting me ready for the wrestle. Are you going to use that right hand? Mr. Jun Ri is his name. He's training me now for the Japanese wrestle. Yes, that wasn't the right hand. That was the unique acupuncture. punch. It was a karate chop right. If you watch it again. That's it already your acupuncture shot. That's the acupuncture punch I told you about. If you keep watching, you won't hardly see it. It's so fast. That's the unique acupuncture. punch. That's the kid Gavin Lambolo, you see me. You didn't do the dancing that we expected. We thought you'd move more. I did. I danced a little bit, but I didn't have to dance too much. I had to figure him out because he wouldn't fall for it. He wouldn't follow me. When the man, he was a southpaw, I couldn't get my punches off this, so I had to concentrate on right leads. Thank you, champ. Congratulations. I salam alaikum again to the great honorable Wallace D. Muhammad. Muhammad Ali, still the heavyweight champion of the world, had himself a fight in Munich, Germany tonight, and we'll take another look at it after we pause for this word.
Junior Bodine, it took the banjo to bring the down home sound to country music. Heck, Dub Dub, it took the electric guitar to let the world hear country music. Ain't that right, Wendell? All I know is it took Schlitz to bring the taste to life. All right. Introducing Schlitz Light Beer. Less filling and one-third fewer calories than our regular beer, but all the taste you'd expect from Schlitz. It took Schlitz to bring the taste to light. But it took Debbie Debbie Briscoe to teach you all to wear rhinestones. Where's the roughest spot you have to shave? Your chin, around your lips, under your nose, your neck? My rough spot. Rise knows you have easy spots and rough spots, so we make Rise especially for the rough spots. Matter of fact, Rise has four beard softeners, four. We figure if Rise makes your rough spots easy to shave, it has to be just great for your whole face. What would you say about a small practical sedan? The drive was a big car with its ride. Unbelievable. That's exactly what I say about this new Dodge Aspen Special Edition. Unbelievable. It's as practical to drive as it is delightful to look at. And what would you say about this Aspen being almost $450 less than a comparable Ford Granada? Unbelievable. It's unbelievable to find so much comfort in a car so practical. See the unbelievable Aspen at your Dodge dealers today. Safeguard's deodorant lather is so effective, it doesn't need heavy perfume. Safeguard gives you naturally clean-smelling skin. Good morning. Hi. You always smell so fresh. What about me? I use a deodorant soap. That's just it, Norman. You smell like a deodorant soap. Good morning. Clean. With Safeguard, you don't get the heavy smell of some deodorant soaps. You get naturally clean-smelling skin. television monitor at our location, but you're enjoying them back home. I like the way that, that Dunn came to Ali, and of course that was all instinctive after the fourth round, you've got to feel, Larry. I think he surprised uh, Ali actually there. All the scouting reports on Dunn were that he would just fall apart the first time he got hurt, that he didn't know how to defend himself. The way he did defend himself was just to go right back at him. The expression I kept hearing when I did the interview, uh, guys, was that he couldn't hold the punch. I thought he held it well because Ali even wound up like a sidearm pitcher. And look at him. And Dunn kept coming back, which was amazing. And even when a referee called it uh, no fight, Dunn kept hollering, no, no, no. There it is. And at that point, I felt that referee hit a happy medium as much as could be expected. You want the challenger to have a chance to win the fight. On the other hand, you don't want him to leave the ring permanently injured. And I thought he, he drew the line rather well. Maybe Candace is the one to ask about that. That is the unpleasant part of the game, Candace. You saw all the pretty beforehand. What was your reaction? Oh, ringside of the fight is a whole different fight scene. I, well, I was just horrified. I felt so sorry for Dan. I kept thinking of Lenny and Mice and Men, and then he kept coming to the ropes and winking at us and smiling while Ali was pummeling him. <laughs> More comments. Muhammad Ali has defended his heavyweight title against Richard Dunn. Many more special features for you, but first we're going to pause for these important words. This is an antiperspirant spray called Sure. It's different. Really. Most antiperspirant sprays go on wet and oily. Compared to Sure, which goes on dry. And Sure keeps you drier. Prove it under your own two arms. Try Sure on your left side and the spray you like best on your right side. If you're like most people, your left side will convince your right side. You'll be drier. We're Sure. Jim, my shampoo. We're out. 
Try mine. Do you have dandruff? So do some other people I know. Yeah, but I want soft, shiny hair. Don't worry. Smells good. Wow, my hair is soft. That wasn't really a dandruff shampoo. Head and shoulders? Yep, and you can't beat it for controlling dandruff. Just use it all the time. Yeah, but you tricked me. Better a tricky husband than a flaky wife. <laughs> Head and shoulders. When a man retires from football, the worst thing he can do is let himself slow down. That's why we all get together and try to stay active. And we drink light beer from Miller. We love the way it tastes. But the great thing is, it's actually less filling. Light's got one-third less calories than a regular beer. Heck, active guys like us wouldn't dream of getting filled up. Ready, guys? Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer. And less. <laughs> <laughs> One of these motorcycles is a big 1,000cc Harley-Davidson. The other Harley-Davidson's 250cc street bike. Built to feel, ride, and look like a classic Harley-Davidson. With Harley-Davidson acceleration, power, durability. If you can't tell it from our big bike, see your AMF Harley-Davidson dealer. Experience the SS250 yourself. Until you've been on a Harley-Davidson, you haven't been on a motorcycle. Buy any Harley-Davidson lightweight before June 7th and get $169 CB radio free. An exciting night here in Munich. And I must say that, Larry, I think that before the show, we, we talked about that this fight might tell us which direction Ali would be going. And I think it has to the point that uh, he no longer can rope a dope and he can Ali shuffle. He's got to stand in there and slug it out. And I think he proved that he can take it and certainly he can hit. He's been able to do that all along. You'd have to say that uh, Ali rose to his level of competence while the Peter Principle stood for Dunn. He rose to his level of incompetence. But he gave us a good show. Didn't you think Dunn fought a good fight? He fought a brave fight. He was just outclassed by a great fighter. He gave you all he had. I don't think he left anything in the gym, in the locker room, or outside the ropes. Candace, you have a closing comment from an overview? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's beautiful saying that, too. Has she been a delight? She has. Huh? Dick, you Joe did a great, great. job. Uh, what about you for a comment? I just, uh, I'm impressed with the ability of a man, once he crawls through these ropes, to be able to, in his own naked state, no one to help him, to be able to fight the way these two men tonight. I, I, you had to love them both in their own yeah, special absolutely. way. Absolutely. So a heavyweight championship fight is exactly that, one of the great moments in sports. So, goodbye to Candace Bergen, Larry Merchant, and Dick Enberg. My Saturday name is Joe Garagiola from Munich, Germany. We're saying goodbye, but this Saturday, it's baseball, it's grandstand, and it's tennis from Rome. All right here on NBC. Dino and friends feast on a fun-filled Joe Garagiola roast. Tuesday.